welcome to this part of our globe. Right now we're standing in the middle of the earth and we're looking out at a very important continent, I think, Africa is actually the continent I was born in, uh, in South Africa. It's a vast c continent uh, with a large number of countries from the north to the south and also a great range of climate zones. And we can see some the Sahara Desert, we can see rainforests. But one feature that I want to point out in particular, which brings up the issue of water and who owns the water. Uh, right now we're looking at this beautiful river, very well known, the Nile. This is the river right at its delta in the north, where paper or papyrus was introduced early on, and that gave us our present paper, and you can see the delta right about there. But the Nile is a fascinating country. When we look at it, it's a series of tributaries. It flows from basically the equator towards the Mediterranean Sea. But one of the important things to note is that there are serious claims to who owns the water in the Nile. The Nile actually flows through nine different countries as part of its watershed. But because of colonialism, the British had given Egypt, the country right about there in the north, near the mouth, 89% of the all water in the Nile. So the tensions about rivers and ownership of water are very well illustrated by those conflicts where countries like Ethiopia, for example, are threatening to take more and to build more dams on the Nile. And so the question is, who owns the Nile water? It's an important topic for us to think about and ask those really relevant questions. The other area I want to show you on in the Africa is in the central part of the Africa, right here, uh, a series of different countries. Remember we said earlier that Africa was part of that supercontinent. And so there were pressures being pulled in from all sides. The result of that is that Africa is a rich storehouse of minerals that we use, whether they be diamonds or gold and so on. So all of these uh, are in large quantities in Africa. What it tells us, of course, is that we need to ask questions about how those minerals are produced and where they're produced and who benefits from that. And one of those minerals found in Central Africa is called tantalum. And tantalum is a, a mineral that is essential for your cell phone, for your computer, and it's mined in larger quantities in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, where I'm pointing right now. And it's mined there under horrible near slave conditions. And that's an important point for us to think about. How are we connected to other parts of the world? How is the cell phone that I have in my hand connected to others, to other areas and other people in the world? And how can I help by learning about these things in order to create a better world? We're very pleased when we go to schools with the Earthview to discover that many schools have projects asking about the connections between that mineral resource that's essential for our phones, and how we view the world, and what we can do as individuals to put pressure on companies, on countries, to create that better world that we want. So that's a really important part of what we try to do. Uh, the other part of, of this right here, as I'm pointing it out to you, is Africa appears very often when we speak about hurricanes. Uh, most of our hurricanes start off the coast of Africa, and the reasons for that are clear. You have a large area of very hot and very dry and sandy air moving that away, uh, and in effect, and meeting the Atlantic Ocean, cool, moist air, and that combination creates a series of these hurricanes near the islands, the Cape Verdean Islands. And so when we look at that, our connections are pretty strong and pretty distinctive as those hurricanes develop and move across the Atlantic Ocean towards the United States of America. So again, connections between places are really significant. One other feature when we look at a continent, and in this case Africa, is again our interconnectedness. Uh, it is very exciting whenever I go to a grocery store to find out where those fruits in particular are produced. 
Many of those fruits cannot be produced in New England because of all weather, but they are produced in certain countries. For example, Southern Africa right here produces large amounts of oranges and uh, that are exported to the United States. You can see that in the grocery store. It's written there. And the climate in the southern part allows for a large production of oranges. On the other hand, Morocco in the north produces what I call the loveliest of tangerines. And we find those in our grocery stores all the time. So again, when we look at different places, it's not just the distinctiveness and the characteristics of those places, but how they relate to the rest of the world, and in particular to us, as we buy or relate to products that are found in these various parts of the world. And that's one of the main reasons why we do this, thinking about place, space, resources, people, and how we all tend to be connected.